Let's continue our discussion for chapter two, and we're going to start talking about nomenclature. I'll discover that in a second. Uh, but basically, uh, I'll remind you that opposites detract, and when positive ions and negative ions hang out, they chemically bond ionically, uh, and the things that they form are known as ionic compounds because they're made up of ions. So Na plus and Cl minus form NaCl. This thing is an ionic compound. If a compound is not ionic, it is known as molecular. Okay, so compounds that are usually just non-metals hanging out together are moleculars, are molecular. So let's classify which one of these is molecular, which one is ionic. This is all non-metals. This is going to be uh, molecular. It's not ions hanging out together. This is ionic. I have a metal, sodium, and fluorine, non-metal. This is ionic. This is also a, uh, an ionic compound. Potassium is a metal, and iodine, iodine is a, uh, a non-metal. This is just iodine, it's going to be molecular. So F2, I2, Cl2, Br2, O2, all those, N2, these are all molecular, okay? N2O5, N and O are both nonmetals, this is going to be molecular. Aluminum is a metal, this is a nonmetal, this is going to be ionic, okay? So uh, just like that. Uh, so uh, this is important because we're going to name them. We're going to name things that are molecular and things that are ionic, and they have different ways of, of being named, okay? And we're going to go through a ton of examples. You're going to get sick of it. All right, nomenclature, this word. This word just means naming or the, the, the systematic naming of things, okay? And it's, we use that uh, in chemistry, but we use it in general in science and in engineering. Whenever you talk about nomenclature, you're talking about what the variables are called, or what the uh, what the metals are called, what the non-metals are called, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is uh, what we call non uh, nomenclature. Okay, let's look at positive ions, cations. All right, well, how do we name them? Well, it's pretty simple. It's the same as the element for all of them. So if uh, if I'm looking at sodium and I have an uh, ion of sodium, it's a sodium ion. If I have zinc, it's a zinc ion. Any metal, you just attach the word ion to it, and it's that ion. Okay. Uh, if the metal is a transition metal, though, you have to indicate the charge that it has in Roman numerals, in parentheses, like this. So Fe3+, plus, you just write iron 3 ion, iron 2 ion. Zinc is a, is a transition metal, zinc 2 ion, okay? Why? Because this, this right here shows you. Iron uh, has uh, several possible charges as an ion. Uh, sodium doesn't. Sodium is always going to be positive one if it's an ion. So I don't have to write sodium one. It's obviously going to be sodium one. So group one is always going to be plus one. Group two is going to always be plus two. Group three is usually plus three and so on and so forth. So I don't have to do that for, for, for the metals in these groups in group one, two, and three. But for the transition ones, I do. Okay. So that's how you, that's how you uh, go about uh, that. So if it's in group one, two, and three, Assume you don't put a, uh, a, a number after the name. If it's not in those groups, put that in. Just err inside of caution. Even if it's not necessary, put it in. Just put it in, be redundant, whatever. Okay, don't be redundant here. This is wrong. To write sodium 1 would be bad. Sodium, uh, open parenthesis, I, close parenthesis, ion, that's, that's a no-no, right? Uh, it's not wrong, but it's just people don't write it like that. Okay. How do we name anions? Okay, so it's not so difficult, uh, but it's, it's a little bit more complicated because we have to change the name a little bit, okay? If it's one element, it's just an element, uh, what I do is I, I drop the end and I replace it with an "-ied", okay? And I call it something "-ied ion", okay? So oxygen ion, I don't write oxygen ion, I drop the end and I call it oxide ion. This is the oxide ion. Okay, chlorine, I change the N-E to a D-E, and it becomes a chloride ion. So chloride ion, uh, bromide ion, fluoride ion, iodide ion, th this kind of stuff, okay? Nitrogen becomes the nitride ion, all right? Just non-metals uh, tend to be this way. Uh, metals don't tend to form negative ions, so you don't usually see that with, with metals. Hydrogen, let me just uh, switch over here for a sec. Hydrogen. Uh, if, it, if I want to be an ion, uh, if it's a positive ion, it would be like the metals in, in group one. You just write, this is the hydrogen ion. Just so you'd write, because a positive ion. If it's a negative, it's the hydride 
ion. Okay? I don't have to put this here. You don't put that because it's in group one. You don't put that. Here is a negative ion, so you don't deal with that. Okay? Okay. Uh, let's go back. Okay. Uh, oxy anions. Um, let me show you some oxy anions. Uh, these are um, anions that are made up of uh, several elements, not just uh, one. And in the, there is a there is a, a systematic way of doing this. Uh, and if you look at your textbook, they explain how you name them and blah blah blah. But I think it's just it's so the 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 method by which they name it is so ridiculously arcane. Don't worry about it. Just memorize it, and I'll tell you which ones to memorize. These are oxy anions, meaning that they're going to have some element with an oxygen in it, and together they're going to form an ion. See? So uh, let's see. This is the carbonate ion. The carbonate ion is CO3. Uh, basically, it's C bonded to three O's, all right? And together, all together, they form a negative two ion, all right? This just happens to be like that. So even though it's multi atomic uh, or polyatomic, polyatomic ion, uh, it, it, so it's not a compound like H2O. It would be something like an H2O, but with a charge, meaning that it's, it's a molecular thing that comes together and it forms a charge with all three together, or four or five, whatever elements uh, stuck, smushed together. Okay, so I recommend memorizing uh, the ones I circled. Uh, you won't necessarily see these, uh, um, which they, they point out in the book, but I, I don't, I rarely see these. Sometimes you'll see the borate ion, but uh, the other ones, I, I don't really think you see much. They explain to you what, like this, the per and the eight and the ite and the hypoite in the book. If you want, if that, if that drives with you, go ahead. If it doesn't drive with you, just memorize it like this because it doesn't really happen for the other ones, okay? Uh, I will tell you that from now until the end of time, you'll, you'll, you'll see a whole bunch of these. Carbonate comes up a lot beyond chemistry. Uh, you know, if in environmental engineering, you talk about carbonates in, you know, water quality uh, and things like that. Um, uh, chlorides and chlorates are used in bleaching agents. Uh, so you might see it over there. Um, phosphates are uh, used also in environmental mitigations. You'll see that a whole bunch. So these things do come up a lot. Sulfates as well. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, you're going to have to know a lot of these. Uh, I'll tell you, some of these uh, are just going to be for this course. So sulfite, I didn't see much beyond Gen Chem. Tell you from our experience. But, you know, we're going to have you memorize it. Nitrate, you'll see. Nitrate, not as much. But, again, commit these to memory. All right, other ions to memorize. Uh, very important to memorize uh, these because they come up a lot. This is the hydroxide ion, and we'll see it when we're talking about uh, bases. This is the characteristic of a base. This is the hydronium ion. So you can see it looks like an H2O, but it's got an extra H. Uh, and it's got a charge of plus one. So it's a, this is a hydronium ion. This is the ammonium ion. It's a, an ammonia that got an, got an extra H. This is the acetate ion. And this is the cyanide ion. The cyanide, like cyanide pills, right? Uh, so this, uh, this is C, triple bond N with a negative charge. 